Thank you, Mandy. So 17 minutes after 7 o'clock, and she's right. It is a good morning, a little bit rainy, and some cool temperatures following the rain. So uh, just be prepared for that. Otherwise, not a bad morning. Robin, you sound pretty good. Thank you. I feel a lot better. Good morning to you. Good morning, Larry. (laughs) How be everything over there? Pretty good. I'm glad, I'm glad you defeated the flu. Yeah. Successfully came out the other end of it unscathed. Yes. Thank you so much. And it was. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me see what's going on today. It is Tuesday. And, uh, it, yeah, there is some cool temperatures. There are some cool temperatures coming our way after this rain. And, uh, boy, it, it was coming down pretty hard at my place this morning. Was it at your place? Oh, yeah. It scared my dog. Some so. people might say last night. For me, it was this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Anything after midnight, it's this morning. As we're up. <laughs> uh, let's see. We'll start off the morning this morning at 7.30. Bring Back the Bible is our um, two-minute feature. I don't want to say it here. Pastor Walter Smith, of course, brings you that. He's the pastor of Heritage Baptist Church. Bring Back the Bible. Colleen Coble is coming in at 7.35. She is the CEO of something called American Christian Fiction Writers, and she is one of them. She has come. She's coming on the radio with us to talk about her book, Butterfly Palace. It is a Christian romantic mystery novel. How about mm-hmm. that? 8.35 this morning, News Bites, the hottest news, current events, serve bite size. We shrink it so you can hear it. It's got to be a, a better, better phrase. We... We shrink it so you can think it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Today is Tuesday, so Carol Ann Baldwin will be in the studio to talk about this rain and the cold and how it affects your garden. Mm-hmm. That's what she does on the air with us. And uh, well, I was looking through some old photographs, and she's been with us for a long time. Long, long time. Her pictures go way yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love Ed, those pictures. Ed Kleinman is uh, our guest at 10.05. He spent 18 years working on the road with bands. Right, it would be rock and roll bands. From roadie to tour manager, he's the owner of his own entertainment management company now, and he's also an executive coach to Salesforce, through yeah, so Salesforces, I guess. Yep. Um, he's got a book called Joint Venture, a backstage rock and roll journey. <laughs> it's the backstage <laughs> rock and roll journey. I wonder if there's any X-rated stuff in there. I'll find out. <laughs> it is no. my job, Robin, <laughs> to find out these important facts. <laughs> So we can go on with our lives. Exactly. And wonder why we didn't have such a life. <laughs> I, I don't regret not having that life. Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> da- damage Control this morning at 1035. Joe Reichel hosts that program. He's the co-owner of Damage Control Services, and he speaks about disaster restoration. You know, there's something you don't want to think about, but if a tree falls on your house, God forbid. Oh, yeah. And uh, you need it fixed. He's the guy to call. Linda. Stacy is coming on 11.05. I might be mispronouncing her name, but this lady is on everything. Listen to this. She's regularly on the CBS Early Show. She's a co-host of the Radio Factor with Bill O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. Uh, she writes. For, uh, she's a critic and a columnist for the New York Daily News. She's a co-host of NY1's television show, whatever that is, called What a Week. Um, in other words, I don't know what NY1 is. Maybe it's New York One. Maybe yeah, it's, probably. A, yeah, like a cable show. TV show. She's a contributor to the Today Show, Good Morning America, and it goes on and on and on. And I'll just tell you, she's coming on to talk about her book. It's called The Sixth Station. And uh, what fascinated me about it, it's a novel, it's fiction, but it's about the Shroud of Turin, which has always fascinated me, and the Veil of Veronica, which has also fascinated me, although I haven't read much about it, although I, we did a show once about it. Yeah. The Veil of Veronica. So yeah, we did. She'll educate me about that. But anyway, so it should be a fun and interesting and looking forward to Linda being on with us. Fun with Joe today. Do you know what, you know what I was doing yesterday, Robin, in the production room? I know you know. I was producing a commercial for the Ocala Civic Theater. Yeah. And it's a commercial for a musical that's coming up in February. Yep. And uh, it is called, Do Black Patent Leather Shoes Really Reflect Up, right? Yep. And it is directed in the choreography, and there's a lot of things done by uh, a well-known actor from our community who spends half of his time here, half of it out in Hollywood, California, Mm -hmm. Greg Thompson, for those of you who know Greg. And uh, we know Greg through this show here. Uh, We don't hang out with him. No. (laughs) But we know him from the show. A lot of years. And we also know him from the Student Media Festival, where he sometimes is the host. Right, exactly. So anyway, so Greg happened to be here yesterday because he was coming on to Buddy's show Mm -hmm. uh, and to talk about the Golden Globes. 
I believe yes, is that what right. he's talking about? The fashion. So he happened to be sitting in the in the, the little <laughs> waiting room we have here, the cloud room. And I, and I and I didn't even know it was him, and and he didn't know it was me, and, and then he thought I quit WOCA and came to this station. And I said, no, this is WOCA. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't know we moved. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, so uh, we kind of chatted a bit. And He's I, in a fog. I invited him in to this to the uh, production room to cut the commercial with me. Yeah. And the commercial is for the play that I just told you about. It's a musical called "Do Black Patent Leather Shoes Really Reflect Up?" I had never heard of this play before. Okay. No. Me but anyway, so I started thinking about musicals and what does that have to do with fun with Joe? Well, that's the topic for today. I will play a piece of music from a Broadway musical. And you and Joe will have to guess the name of the song and the name of the play it's from. Oh, cool. Okay, That's so, awesome. So I got some sound bites. That's awesome. All right. And then our segment with Galen today. I, l- I love Unsolved Mysteries. I've always been a fan of that TV show called Unsolved Mysteries. I can't mm-hmm. remember who the host was. What was the guy's name? I don't recall. But anyway. You know, I, I can't remember his name, but when you tell me his name, I can tell you a fact about him. Mm-hmm. My brother Bob used to be his mechanic. <laughs> oh, that's pretty awesome. What is that guy's name? Unsolved mystery. That guy, he came out and had like a very serious face and, hi, I'm a serious guy and I'm going to tell you some unsolved mysteries. Remember that guy? Yeah. <laughs> Was it the, the guy that... Oh, um, I can't remember his name. But anyway, so... Anyway. Oh, Robert Stack. Yeah, that's him. Thank okay. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. My brother Bob was that's his mechanic. <laughs> Hard to believe, huh? Small world, but yeah. but Bob lives in California, so that explains that. Right. He's not a mechanic anymore, by the way. Uh, so anyway, so our Galen segment this morning is Unsolved Mysteries. Cool. Unsolved Mysteries. That I just kind of threw a few together. I think they're fun. <laughs> and uh, so I guess that's it. Let me take a second look at the news. Some really disturbing stories this morning. I just don't like disturbing news. I would rather hear nasty politics any day than people shooting each other. And that was one of the stories. Did you hear the story? And, and I know I heard Tom talking about it yesterday. Tom Schmitz on uh, uh, the show. Voice of Ocala, the mm-hmm. Buddy Show. Uh, and, but and that was the first I heard of this story. So anyway, the story is: there's a 71 year old man in jail now. 71 years old. Went to the movies yesterday. Went to the movies in the theater in Wesley Chapel, which mm-hmm. is not that far from here. Right. Just outside of Tampa, I guess. Yeah, it is not Tampa. And. Uh, Sitting in front of him is a guy, and he's texting. And the, the 71-year-old man is not happy with this man texting for some reason. Witnesses say the movie didn't even start. It was still the coming attraction. Oh. The man in front of him, who is no longer alive, was 43 years old. The 71-year-old guy tells him something about being upset with him texting, and he says, I'm texting my daughter. All right. So the 71-year-old man gets out of his seat appears to be going to get a manager, does not come back with a manager, but comes back upset and starts to argue with the guy. And somehow Uh popcorn got thrown. It doesn't really say who threw the popcorn, but what difference does it make? The 71-year-old man pulls out a gun. The 43-year-old man's wife puts her hand over her husband trying to protect him. Oh, my God. The 71-year-old then shoots the man through the wife's hand uh, kills the man, injures the wife's hand. What an idiot. What a selfish, ignorant case. Yeah. What the heck is wrong with people? Anyway, so the guy, the 43 year old guy is dead now. His children have no daddy. His wife has no husband. The 71 year old man's life is ruined. Thank God. Let it be ruined. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, exactly. Give him the What the, the heck chair. is wrong with this guy? Mm hmm. Put him away forever. Yeah. The chair's too good for him. Mm-hmm. Let, let him sit in there forever. 71 years old, good. See you later. Never. Mm-hmm. See you never. Mm-hmm. What is wrong with this? You go to a movie theater to watch a film. Yeah. Yeah, this is disgusting. Absolutely people disgusting. Are so, people are so selfish. I, I, I tell you. I, I think that every time I drive down the road. Yeah. I, I see people. They absolutely. The drive with. The, there's one word that explains the driving. They're selfish. Yeah. They're not in a hurry. They're selfish. Exactly. Or, or their hurry is caused by their selfishness, whatever it is. That's right. And then there's another selfish. story. Another story bothered me this morning. I'm sure it bothered everybody. A 37-year-old woman. It sounds like her children went to school in uh, Williston. Mm-hmm. She has, uh, had, you know, was separated from her husband. She's going to, I guess she worked at the North Florida Regional Medical Center. I don't think she was there as a patient. I think she works there. 
And she was in the parking garage, which is a multi-level garage. And her estranged husband stabs her to death in, oh. her, in her car. Oh, so, God. Somebody reports a, a deceased woman in a car. They go check it out. Um, they do a little research. They find out that her husband is estranged. And they figure it might be him. And somebody gave him a tip that he might be in Daytona. Well, he was in Daytona. He went to a friend's house and killed himself in the friend's house. Oh, gee. So again, an act of selfishness. Yeah. In, in, in more ways than one. He, he, this, this friend now has to live with the fact that this guy killed himself in his house. Yeah. Right? The, the children now have no mom or dad, because I'm assuming that the estranged husband is the father of those children. Mm-hmm. Just absolutely selfish, all these t- two stories. It is very so, selfish. Uh, Anyway, so those are the two Disgusting. the two stories that I hate to tell you. I hate that news. It's just just I'm sorry, I hate it. Yeah, but we have to hear it because well, it's not roses. Every I don't know day. what you do with it. I I like to give news that you can use. It, it'll somehow serve you. Yeah. I don't know how that actually serves you, other than well, I mean, what are you gonna do? Stay away from movie theaters? Stay away from parking garages? What are you gonna do? No, uh, uh-uh. uh, no. But you're gonna be more aware. And if somebody, you know, if you're in a movie theater and you're starting to text, maybe you'll think twice about no don't do that maybe there's a nutcase in there well that's true but you should be allowed to text you know, during during a coming attraction and at any time texting doesn't make any noise no but there's a light there on the phone and that might Unbelievable. distract yeah no that's it's just All you right, know, we, got, people, we got a phone there's more news mm-hmm. than that but I don't, I don't know good morning you're on the air yeah it's me tom yeah the, the worst part of that shooting thing yeah. The, the shooter is a retired Tampa police uh, captain. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. What a jerk. I wonder what kind of policeman he really was. Really? Really? His son is a I current... Mean, I, his... I, I, can't, I can't believe he would be, you know, that he, uh, acting like that. He didn't just start acting like that because he was 71 years old. He's probably been a bully with a badge his whole life. Probably. Right. I, I'm with you. I hear you. All righty, Larry. Thank Have you, a great Tom. Day. Yeah, I forgot that part. He was. But you said his son is what? I think his son is currently on the police force. Oh, department, okay. I think. Which, you know, you don't want to f- reflect the father on the son or either. Or, but anyway, those two stories just disturbed me. I, I wish I could tell you. There, there's a political story. The governor wants to spend more money to fix our roads, to fix our bridges, to fix the, the Everglades, to fix the port in Jacksonville. So he's deciding he wants to spend money. Okay. <laughs> so, I guess that's good. I don't know. It's better than killing, I'll tell you that. Yeah. All right, let's go to Pastor Walter B. Smith, and then we'll be back. We'll start our day right now. Deal? Deal. Well, a good day to you, and welcome again this morning to Bring Back the Bible. I am Pastor Smith, coming to you as always from Heritage Baptist Church right here in Northeast Ocala. One of my uh, mentors, one of the preachers that God used to shape me as a young man and call me into the ministry was Dr. John R. Rice, and he used to say, all the devil's apples have worms in them. Perhaps you knew Dr. Rice, and you remember him saying that all All of the devil's apples have worms in them. He meant that sin may look good, but let's consider, folks, the results of sin. Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden because of sin. Cain killed Abel because of sin. Lot, the loser, losing everything, including his morals, because of sin. Samson was blind and bound and made sport of for his enemies because of sin. David paid fourfold for the murder of Uriah the Hittite. Judas hung himself. And today we have drunks in the gutter and graveyards filled with those who thought they could win playing the sin game. Well, I want to ask you, if God spared not the angels that sinned, who are we to think that we can get by with it? In James chapter 1 and verse 15, it tells us, Where sin ends, it says, sin brings forth death. And there's some extras that come with sin, too. Meaning that sin will take you farther than you want to go. Oh, it will. And sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. Yes, it will. And sin will always cost you more than you want to pay. Yes, it will. The Bible says, when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, remember this, bringeth forth death. It's cold in here. Ooh, it's hot in here. Ah, it's just right in this house.
Looks like one out of three know about climate control mechanical services in Ocala. The first didn't call 291-0185. The second didn't know to call 291-0185. The third called 291-0185. So the moral of the story? To know is one thing, but to know and take action is another. Climate control mechanical services. Just right. ABC News Now. I'm Karen Chase. A texting spat in a Florida movie theater erupted into deadly gunfire. Police say a man shot and killed a fellow moviegoer who refused to stop texting. He's charged with second-degree murder. A missing woman is still being sought in the icy Chicago River where she apparently jumped in to save a friend who had dived in to retrieve a dropped cell phone. He did not survive. Another friend who jumped in did survive. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie plans to try to focus on improving education in his State of the State address tonight, but investigators are focusing on two scandals plaguing his administration, the traffic jam caused by top aides, and an ad campaign starring the governor paid for by Hurricane Sandy relief money. West Virginia officials are asking people to be patient as they gradually lift the ban on drinking water caused by a chemical spill. They're still flushing out the system. Kentucky corrections officials have some explaining to do after two incarcerated inmates posted a selfie from behind bars in their jailhouse jumpsuits. The two are also accused of renting out their smartphone to other inmates to make calls. This is ABC News. Start off the new year for just a buck at Rena Center. Now through February 1st, anything in the store is just a dollar a day. Choose your favorite brand name appliances, laptops, tablets, computers, flat screen TVs, and furniture, and pay just a dollar a day until February 1st. There's never been a better time to try the brands and products you want most during the dollar a day sale only at Rena Center. Metal purchase transaction, $1 per day for each item through February 1, 2014. Must be paid in advance. Regular rates apply thereafter. Offer good on new agreements only. See store for full details. The fact is, you can't make spring hurry up and get here, but you can make sure you're good and ready for it. Get $1,000 off RSX850i Gator Utility Vehicles and $500 off one-family tractors with a purchase of two John Deere or Frontier brand implements. Most offers end February 3rd. Stop by your John Deere dealer for details. Ag Pro Companies is your local John Deere dealer. For details on all 25 of our locations, visit agprocompanies.com or myjohndeerdealer.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, IOAs, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440 or online at powellgene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Wear it, Florida. Today will be cloudy with occasional rain and a thunderstorm around for the morning and early afternoon hours before it dries out late today with highs in the 70s. Clearing and turning colder tonight with lows anywhere from 46 well inland to 54 along the coast. Some sunshine tomorrow, high 66 to 70. Thursday, mostly sunny, breezy and cooler, high just 50 to 54. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. Thank you very much. 25 minutes before 8 o'clock, a little bit wet out there, and uh, the meteorologists say once that weather is gone, some cool, cool temperatures moving in. <laughs> yeah. But we're okay with that. Not, I didn't like it cold, though. The other day was a little bit too much. Yeah. When you live in Florida, and, you, and you're and you from the north, you want a little bit of cold. I know everybody who's born here says, no, we don't ever want it cold. <laughs> I like it cold, just a little bit in the winter, right? Me too. Um, Colleen Coble is on the phone with us, and uh, she's got a new book called Butterfly Palace. It's a romantic mystery novel, but I want to say something before we say good morning to Colleen. Um, I saw uh, an interview with, um, oh, goodness, I, I just dro- drove a blank from her name. Another author we have on all the time. Debbie Maycomber. Thank you. How'd you know? I don't know. A- anyway, <laughs> an- an- anyway, Debbie was talking about um, the fact that she's a Christian and she's a writer. And while she, every, everything she writes isn't necessarily biblical, you know, she writes it from a Christian perspective. And we've had a lot of authors on, and, and I'm not being judgmental here, but readers have a choice, and, which is a good choice. If you like, you know, dirty 
sexy books and things like that. What is that? What is that? Fifty Shades of Grey? Yeah. Okay, that's your cup of tea. But what if you don't? What if you want a romantic novel? Hey, you're allowed to fall in love by God's rules. Yeah. God wants you to fall in love, right? <laughs> yes. So it's not it's not so bad. A bad thing. And this so this is a romantic mystery novel, uh, and it's called Butterfly Palace. And Colleen happens to be the CEO of a group called American Christian Fiction Writers, which is why I brought the the Christian part up in the intro. She's an award winning novelist, by the way, and I think she's been with us before. I apologize for not knowing that for sure. Colleen, good morning, Colleen. I have been, yes. Good morning, Larry. Great to be here again. Thank you. I love your bubbly voice. Uh, I love yours. It's always fun to get to talk to somebody that uh, is up in the morning, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that's all we are is up in the morning. So where, where are you right now? Where are you? I'm in Indiana, and I was chuckling at your uh, comment about it being cold in Florida because we had that big blizzard that went through last week and with the 40 degrees below with the wind chill. 40 below? Oh, man. <laughs> no, we were, we were unhappy when it was 40 above. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I think is what it's going to today. Well, anyway, anyway, Colleen, thank you for being on. Now, did you were you uncomfortable with my intro at all? And I hope not. Not at all. I was smiling. I love Debbie. Actually, she's spoken at our uh, conference before, and she's she's a great gal. Uh-huh. And really, that's how I write too. I write from a from a Christian worldview, which means that um, I want my readers to have a great story, but I don't want them to have to slog through graphic sex scenes and and bad language. I want them to be engrossed in the story and to come away with a sense of hope. Yeah, because bottom line is, isn't that what we all want as a story? You know, one of the things I, I've thought about these new, beautiful, gigantic, perfectly pictured TVs is that they're only as good as the story that's being told on them, right? Absolutely. That's absolutely right. Because you can, you can the, the lowest technology we have is a book. That's pretty low technology. And you can be more entertained with a well-written book than you can with anything that's got all that high-tech stuff going on. Oh, and I still am, so, you know, obviously, I love, I love books. So are you a, a reader as much as you are a writer? Oh, yes, absolutely. I, uh, some of the earliest pictures of me are, um, that my parents took are, are well, I, where I've fallen asleep with a book in my hand. So I've been, always been a reader, and it was always a dream to be able to write. And it's, it's great that I get to do what I love to do. And I love the fact that this is a period piece. I really uh, enjoy that. Yeah, the really fun thing about writing that story is there really was um, a serial killer in Austin that was called the Servant Girl Killer, and he uh, he just attacked servant girls, and they never caught him. And so I uh, wanted to write that particular time period of uh, the stories in 1904, and uh, the Servant um, Girl Killer was uh, uh, about 20 years earlier, but they never caught him. And I thought, wouldn't that be fun if there was a scare going on where they thought that um, he was back? And, uh, <laughs> It was it's kind of, you know, in the same time period as uh, Jack the Ripper, even. Oh. It was very fun uh, to get into that. Wouldn't <laughs> Not that? Graphic, Larry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun if the killer came back? <laughs> yeah. I, I have a twisted mind, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Colleen, I, I want to tell you something about the cover. I don't usually mention covers, but the cover, uh, look at the building on the cover. Yes. Looks like the, the train station here in Ocala. Doesn't it sort it of? It does. Really? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, we have an old train station, and I'm glad they never tore it down because it it looks like the the book the the building on the cover of your book, except oh, for the hedges. Oh, we don't I have love old Victorian buildings. Yeah, we don't have these that's the awesome. hedges like that. So yeah, <laughs> they maybe they should Photoshop those in, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but and I I must apologize for talking over you. I didn't mean to do that. I think there's a delay, and so sometimes it sounds like we're done and yeah, we're not right. really. Um, but anyway, thank you for being on with us. So the, the thumbnail, let's see, the movie trailer version of the story. You already told us a little bit of it. Tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a young woman who uh, um, her parents are, are both dead, and she uh, was middle class, but she she's, um, has no job, no means of support. So she goes into service in uh, Austin, and she leaves her small town in Texas and goes to Austin and is going to be a maid in this gr- grand old house, Butterfly Palace. And... Uh, the servant girl, girl killer, um, you know, is uh, has his eye on her, and she stumbles into her fiance that she, that abandoned her, and he's under an assumed name, and so there's all this mystery uh, swirling around her that she's trying to find out what's happened. And the theme of the story really is is um, why bad things happen to good people. Um, you know, that's something that we all kind of struggle with, and, uh-huh, uh-huh. and she's she's coming to grips with that too. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> 
Yeah, and, and and as far as the the romance part, do you, do you um, as a writer, do you prefer the developing the romantic part of the story, or do you prefer the mystery? It sounds like the mystery is more exciting for you. Yeah, I love the mystery part. I grew up on Nancy Drew and all of that, and and I still love to watch CSI and all of those things, and I still read you know voraciously in the mystery suspense genre. So. Um, I have a strong sense of justice, I think, is what it is. And I can't, I look around in the world and there's nothing I can do about the injustice that I see. But by golly, I can make sure the villains get these come up in my stories. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you can make yeah, you can you can make a story and then have it end up just. Hopefully, hopefully we have stories in real life that end up just, right? Uh, your, your publicist yeah, had pointed out to us that you dedicated your story to Diane Hunt. There must be something. Yeah, and, and she lost her battle with ovarian cancer um, just before the book came out, which is, you know, she was my best friend and uh, really a sister of the heart, the sister I never had. And it's uh, watching her go through um, ovarian cancer and yet shining brighter than you can imagine. Um, she just grew more beautiful as, as the cancer took her. And... Um, you know, it's just one of those puzzles in life is, is how do you deal with that when, when something seems so unfair and, and unjust <laughs> in, that, in that particular way? And, and yeah, I, I dearly love Di, and she's, um, she's rejoicing in heaven now, but boy, we miss her here. Oh, wow, wow. So, so, when, you, so when you're writing a, a period piece, do you mentally feel like you're back in time? Do you, do you get up and forget that I you have, have a light switch or something? <laughs> Well, not quite that bad, Larry, but almost. Yeah, I uh, totally get immersed into that and uh, love um, the, the period stuff. You know, for a long time, I, I kind of um, started writing period pieces, but I, my dream was always to kill people. I don't know why. <laughs> so, <laughs> mysteries, and, uh, and I made the leap to contemporary, and then, uh, but then I started kind of missing that. Um, the you know the research and the. The history and and all that you know, there's so much rich fodder um, in the past. And so I went to my editor and asked what she would think of me doing um, something that was historical. But it would have my same typical r mix of romance and suspense, but it would be in a historical time period. And they let me do it, and my readers have loved it. So that's been fun for me. Oh, but wow. the but the research has to be really rewarding for you because you not only have to pay attention to the way the architecture was, but also the fashion of the day. And the manners and yeah. mannerisms. And the manners. And what technology was available or wasn't available. Um, you know, that, that, that well, the one thing, the fun thing about getting to do a period piece is there are no cell phones for my heroine to call for help. <laughs> <laughs> Just rely on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have a copy of the book. It's called Butterfly Palace. I'd like to give it away. It's a wonderful book. It's written by our guest, Colleen Coble. So call me if you want the one that I have. The number is 622-WOCA. That is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline. Get that little promo out of there. Uh, out of the way, I should say. And then after we give it away, we'll get the information from Colleen about how to get it ourselves. Come on, you've got the book. Who's this? Hi, this is Charles. Charles, you got the book. You know where we are, right? Gotcha, man. Okay. Thank you. We're at the Paddock Mall, just in case. Yeah, gotcha. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you, Charles. All right, you got you got a male fan. Is that is that okay? I mean, do you have a lot of male fans? Yeah? I actually do. Um, you know, guys love reading action stories, and, and you know, they're, they're not averse to a little bit of romance in their... In no, their I know. So, I, uh, I know, but I, I wonder what I wonder how it yeah, breaks I down. a lot of male, male readers. I, I'm, again, oh, I'm, again, I apologize for talking over you. <laughs> I, I wonder how it breaks down. I wonder if it's 50-50, 60-40. Yeah. I wonder if more women. What do you it's think? About, uh, um, yeah, I, uh, it's about 75-25. So, you know, it's still skewed to women. But I have a significant um, readership in, ma in with men. Mm -hmm. Mainly, uh, probably, because that it's skewed so much to women is that women are bigger readers, most generally. I mean, yeah. not that men don't read. But, you know, they're... they're, they're Guys, yeah, you know, I think they're so. out chopping wood and uh, honey. <laughs> yeah, they're out chopping wood <laughs> and yeah. hunting. That's right. I know I am. I know that I'm out there a lot. <laughs> uh, 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 all, all of the elements that you jam pack in your stories, there is never a, a boring time, and you really truly are an inspiration to 
aspiring writers because sometimes the writers are just so focused on outlines and facts and you have to do this, that, and the other that sometimes they forget about the creativity and you stress to them to allow that part to come through. That's what makes a good story. That's right, and I am uh, very much a seat-of-the-pants writer. I've tried outlining and following an outline, but by golly, those k- characters will not obey me. <laughs> thing I know, you know, they're just off doing something else, and it's way more fun for me. And, you know, for one thing, if I already know what's going to happen, why write the story? I mean, <laughs> I want to see what they're going to do. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Colleen, you are a joy to talk to. Thank you for getting up early, even earlier than it is here if you're in Indianapolis. This is uh, Indianapolis, right? Just like you, Larry. Oh, you are? Okay. I guess I don't know where, yep. I don't know where that line is. Uh, all right. So, uh, <laughs> so do you have a website, and how else do we get the book? Absolutely. It's ColleenCobel.com, C-O-L-L-E-E-N-C-O-B-L-E.com, and the books are available everywhere, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, any Christian bookstore, most any kind of bookstore, even some in Walmart. Um, Walmart took some of Butterfly Palace, so you should be able to find it everywhere. All right. Colleen Cobble. I've been saying your name wrong the whole time. Uh, Colleen, thank okay, you. everybody does. I'm used to it. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much for being on the air with us and, uh, and brightening our morning with, with such a wonderful personality. Well, thanks so much for having me, Larry and Robin. All right. We will take a little break, and we'll be right back. That is one sound no one likes to hear, but if it happens, know that it will be reported in seconds to the right authorities. AA Lock, Dock, and Security is your company for your home and your business. AA Lock, Dock, and Security, where you can get that extra key made or have your lock rekeyed. Questions to protect your home and business, call 352-867-1965. Or stop by AA Lock, Dock, and Security at their new location, 219 Northwest 10th Street here in Ocala. Remember, be proactive, not reacting after it happens. Call 352-867-1965. 352-867-1965. Trauma care centers save thousands of Florida lives. But Shands UF wants to close Ocala Regional's trauma center. An out-of-town hospital that receives millions in taxpayer money is suing to shut down Ocala's trauma center. They want to pull the plug on life-saving trauma care all over Florida. Don't let them get away with it. Trauma care increases the chance of survival and traumatic injury 